the group. Okay, so uh, today we'll talk about verb, right? Uh, if you remember, we talked about this uh, course description or what we are gonna do in this uh, class, the prescriptive and the descriptive method. And today we'll be doing the things which you already know, but we'll just study it. Uh, we'll just learn the names and uh, like, for example, there are students, uh, they, they know what tenses or what phrases or what clauses, but they cannot explain. Uh, if you have uh, seen uh, people that they use correct English, but if you ask them what is verb, what is adjective, or what is tense, or what type of sentence or clause it is, they are unable to explain it. So today we'll just uh, uh, study this verb, that how we use these kind of uh, words and different uh, uh, types of uh, forms and uh, the order of these uh, verbs that how we use them and different type of uh, clauses and tenses. Uh, today we'll not talk about sentences. If you know, if you have studied that in uh, first year or second year or in metric, in, in English we have uh, four kinds of sentences. <laughs> Uh, so what is the difference between uh, tense or clause or sentences? So we'll study it in detail. Uh, so uh, today the topic, the, the, the main topic is verbs. Remember this, okay? Uh, that is our main topic. So you know what verb is, right? What is verb? Now, whenever I ask a student what verb is, almost everybody replies uh, that a verb is a word which shows action. Of course, it is the definition, but if you see this definition is incomplete. Uh, if somebody tells you uh, that uh, a word, a word is a verb that shows action. Why is it incomplete? Can anybody tell me? It also shows state. Yes, it also yes, shows sir. state. How? Can you the give condition. me a condition? What do you mean by condition? Like, I'm sleepy. Uh, hmm? uh, sorry. Yes, yes. Don't don't worry. Just say it. It's it's right. Whatever you are saying is right. It shows action, and uh, and, uh, huh? and it describes condition. I yes, think. of course. Yes, you're right. Condition or state. Today we have uh, many people, mashallah, in the group. And uh, I'm just letting them in in the group. So, so yes, uh, a verb is not just a word which shows action. Uh, it, it it shows state as well, or uh, as you said, condition. So, and what is the difference between uh, clauses, tense, uh, clause, or tense, or a simple sentence? Can anybody tell me this? So sentence gives a full meaning and it is complete while class is a part of the sentence. For example, we have two classes and um, compound sentences and some, oh. some three classes, uh, etc. we can have in a sentence. While okay. tense shows us uh, the time, time yes. perspective. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, class and tense and simple tense is the same thing. Simple sentence, remember this, okay? One clause can be a sentence as well, but that is called a simple sentence. So today we'll not talk about uh, a compound clause or a complex clause, a sentence or uh, compound complex sentences. 
we'll just today talk about this uh, uh, simple kind of uh, uh, sentence and that is just one clause so these three things if you see a uh, simple sentence or tense or clause these are the same thing remember and then we have compound sentences we'll be doing it some other time so today our focus main focus is the verb what does verb do okay so it tells us about action and the state and then uh, when we make it uh, a clause, we need a subject as well. So the main thing, whenever you want to make a tense or a, or, a, or a clause or a simple sentence, you need two things. And that is a, a subject and a verb or a verb phrase. So without a, without a verb or without a subject, you cannot make any tense or simple sentence or tense. Remember, phrase is another thing. Again, we'll be doing it some other time. Today, we'll also be, I'll, I'll be giving you a few examples of a, a word phrase as well. But phrase does not give you a complete sense because in phrase, we, are, we, we do not have, sometimes we do not have a subject or sometimes we do not have a verb. So, it doesn't give you a complete sense. While uh, class gives you a complete sense because it has a subject and it has a verb. So the main elements for a, for a simple sentence and uh, for a class or a tense is subject and verb. Now, if you see any language, just pick up any language and you will find subject and verb. Now, in different languages, the order can be different. Sometimes, like in other languages, uh, the verb comes first and the subject comes later. Or, uh, like, for example, I'll give you an example of uh, pushto. Like, for example, if I say uh, z, zam. So, z is the subject and zam is the verb. Or, for example, in Urdu, I'll be giving you examples uh, of, uh, we'll be comparing Urdu and English. It will help you understand tenses, and then you will be able to identify this uh, subject and verb in different language. Uh, the one you speak, Urdu, and with English, when we compare it, we will have a better understanding. So, simple verb is just one word or uh, uh, which is a lexical verb indicating an action, event, or state. That is a complete definition. So a verb is not just a word which shows action. It also shows uh, state. The lexical verb shows tense and clause. So again, uh, tense, you have to remember this thing, that tense and clause and simple sentence, a simple sentence is the same thing. In simple sentence, we have just one clause. And what is clause? Uh, clause is just a, 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 a subject plus verb. So whenever we have a subject and a verb, that is a clause. For example, if I say I teach, so I is the subject and teach is the verb. So we have a clause. It is also a tense and it is also a simple sentence. Now, this clause uh, can be of uh, different types, like for, me, for example, uh, uh, interrogative, it can be interrogative, it can be uh, affirmative, like the one I have mentioned this example, if you see, uh, she lives opposite me, or take a seat is a imperative uh, affirmative, or it can be negative as well. For example, do not uh, sit here or do not take this uh, seat. So it can, you already know, I will not go into detail because this is very simple. So you should remember the names. Remember, uh, in exams, they'll ask you question and you have to understand what is declarative sentences or affirmative sentences or negative sentences or uh, interrogative or question sentences because uh, you need to have this kind of vocabulary now again i've just told you that uh, many people speak english but they don't know these the names so as a linguist or uh, studying this subject you must 
uh, concentrate on these uh, words, this vocabulary, grammar vocabulary. Now, again, some people call it uh, uh, different names. Like, for example, if I say, uh, 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 for example, I say, does she live here? Now, this is an interrogative or a question sentence. So you can say a question sentence or interrogative. But again, you have to understand grammatical vocabulary in order to explain such sentences. Okay, another thing, uh, if you remember yesterday or the day before yesterday, I asked you a question. I uh, asked you those uh, conditional tenses or if clauses and almost 99% people give me an incorrect answer. Like the one you remember, if I had had uh, a car, I would have dropped you. Many said that if I had a car. Now the problem with this sentence, what was the problem with that sentence was that you needed uh, past perfect tense. And there were certain students that they knew that this is a third conditional tense and we need uh, a, a past perfect and then would and have and third form of the verb. But again, they had a problem with past perfect tense. So what is past perfect tense and how this verb can be used in different uh, 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 tenses, we'll be doing it today. So in order to understand it better, you need to look at this, uh, uh, this uh, chart or uh, this table i've meant can you see my screen uh, this urdu uh, translation of tenses can you see yes. it okay. yes sir. yes now if you see we like now i we have almost uh, how many tenses uh, 12 tenses on the screen if you see on the screen there are 12 tenses and if you see every tense has a has a subject, okay? Every tense has a subject and a verb. And this is also a clause, like for example, may, if you see in every tense we have a, a, a subject, I'm encircling the, those subjects. You see that, right? Now today we'll be not talking about the subject, we'll be doing it uh, in noun uh, phrase, uh, but I'll just give you an example is, or what I'm saying is that uh, without a subject, we cannot make a tense. So the important element of a clause or a tense or a, or a simple sentence is the subject. Without uh, a subject, we cannot make a tense. We can make a phrase, we can have a phrase, but uh, clauses, uh, we know that we need a subject as well. And if now, so, so to, like in this class, we'll be just using the simple subject, which is a pronoun, only a pronoun, or sometimes a noun as well. So a pronoun and a noun we'll be using. It will be using a simple subject, not a, a complex subject, which is a noun clause, We'll be doing it some other time. So if you see, we have very simple uh, subject, may or, or or he or she or they. So we can change these uh, uh, subject and can have a different kind of uh, tense or a clause. And then the second most important thing is very, very important. If you want to learn a language or if you want to explain it, that is the verb and I'm encirc encircling the verb now. So if you see every tense or a, or a clause has a, uh, a verb. So without a verb and without a tense, we cannot make a tense in any language. Remember, it's not just about uh, uh, English. Kamyabi, uh, okay, calm, okay. Ham ponch, okay, so ponch is the verb in Urdu or wo subah se dor raha hai so dor is a verb again wo uh, teen gante se lik rahi okay another thing is there are certain urdu uh, tenses which are wrong because i could not type it in urdu i just copied it from google uh, so wo fo char ganto se intezar kar rahi hogi so intezar 
So if you see, a verb is very, very important. If we, know, we don't have a verb, we will be not able to make this a tense or a clause. And another most important thing is that if you see in the first three uh, clauses, these first three clauses, only the verb changes. And when the verb changes, the tense also changes. Like for example, present, in present we have liktahu, uh, in the past we have lika, and in the future we have likunga. Now in continuous, if you see the verb changes, like in English, in English we also just change the verb and it changes the whole meaning to that uh, clause. So it's a different kind of uh, tense. So how we make these tenses just because of changing uh, the verb form. So verb is so important that it changes the whole sense of that clause or tense. So why we have, the, if you see in all these uh, uh, four, uh, 12 tenses, if you see 12, we have 12, 12 tenses and every tense is different from one another because we have a different kind of a verb. Okay, another and most important thing is that you have to learn these tenses with Urdu in order to, uh, to in order to understand it fully. Uh, so if you can make other uh, tenses in Urdu, it will be e very easy to translate it because every person translate uh, if you are learning English as a second language. So you people translate it very quickly because you are used to it, these simple sentences. But when it comes to difficult sentences or complex sentences, uh, you, you are unable to translate it because it, it takes time. So in writing those sentences, you write correct, but in speaking, sometimes you have difficulty. So again, in Urdu now, if you want to have, if you want to understand uh, the verb in Urdu, uh, it's very simple. Just word ke piche nuna lifna ta hai, like for example, kelna, sona, jagna, uh, dekna, parna, likna, dorna, these are our verbs. And I'll just pick another verb, uh, Urdu verb, and I'll make 12 tenses. Like for example, me sochta hu, the first one, the simple present. Can you see my this cursor on the on the screen? Hello? Yes, huh? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So yes, for example, if I just pick yes, a Urdu, no. it, okay. If I just pick a Urdu verb, soch na. So again, I just told you that any word which ends with nuna lifna, that is the verb. So soch na, pe main 12 different tenses bana sakta hon with, and I will not change the subject. The subject will remain the same. For example, this first one, simple present. And you should also uh, uh, know these uh, subject, uh, these name as well, the simple present, the past, uh, uh, continuous or the future continuous and then the perfect and all. So in simple present tense, which is the first one, this one, may sochta hu, in the past may ne socha and in the future may sochunga. So if you see the only, only what change? Uh, the verb, only the verb changes. Okay, just give me a second. So, right, uh, the verb change in every sentence, the verb changes. Like, for example, main sochta hoon, main ne socha, main sochunga, main soch raha hoon. This is a uh, continuous tense. Uh, main soch raha hoon ga, main uh, soch chuka hoon. In Urdu, we have this one. In Urdu, we have two uh, types. Like, for example, this perfect, right? Main soch chuka hu or main soch liya hai. In past tense, we say main soch chuka ta, main soch chuka hunga, or in perfect or continuous, perfect, continuous, and continuous is the same. The only difference is the time. When we, meant, we want to mention the time, that becomes a perfect continuous. So 
uh, I'll ask you a question and one only one person will answer me. Who wants to answer my question? Yes. Uh, What's the question, sir? The question Depends is the, the question. question is simple. The question is simple. Is the way I made this uh, these twelve tenses in Urdu? Can you make other uh, twelve tenses in Urdu quickly with another verb? Can you do that? Like for example, Ghana. Ghana paid bara tenses banao jaldi in in uh, in all four tenses. So the simple simple present tense will be quickly say it. Very good, very good, excellent. And a simple past. And simple future. Very good, excellent. So I just wanted you to understand these uh, twelve tenses. So you just pick a verb, make a tense. But if you remove this uh, this verb. If you remove it and then say it, mega, it doesn't give you a sense. Or if you just remove uh, another verb, if you remove this verb, mene, so again, it doesn't give you a, a sense. So verb is very important for a tense, clause, or a, uh, or a, or a simple sentence, right? So okay now let's do this right now we have uh, interrogative or negative sentences or affirmative sentences so this is a uh in with english right like english uh, clauses or english tenses different type of tenses now look at them and if you have any problem i will not explain in this class that with he or she we use present form of the verb or with the with the he or, or with the they we use uh, uh, go or he or she takes uh, goes i'll be not saying it right because that is very simple so you just see it and if you have any problem in in these uh, sentences if you don't understand any tense you can ask me so we have a simple present tense a simple past tense and a simple future tense can anybody tell me that when do we use this uh, present tense, past tense, or future tense? Like future tense we use for the future, past tense we use for the past time, and the present tense we uh, do not use it for the present. Uh, we use it for habitual action. If you see, I write, I do not write, or do I write? So one is the simple affirmative sentence, the second one is the negative, and the third one is the interrogative. Others, I didn't write it because you already know that. So what I'm telling you is that you have to memorize it by translating. This will really help you. You will never, ever make mistake. But if you don't know these with Urdu, I mean, there will be uh, certain sentences or complex sentences where you will make mistake. So now if we see in English, we have a subject in every tense, C, I, or I, or I, and then we have this verb. So here we have uh, write, and then we have second form of the verb, and then we have first form of the verb, but with will. So English and Urdu is like very similar here uh, in in these tenses. Um, if you see in Urdu, the verb changes likta se kya bana? Lika. Or lika se kya bana? Likunga. And in English, we have first form of the verb, we have second form of the verb, and in future, we have uh, will and first form of the verb. Now, in continuous, if you say the whole uh, tenses change, and then we can make millions of sentences like this. That is why, uh, like we are, uh, if, if somebody asks you that how can we, how are we different from animals, is that the first thing which comes to my mind is that we have a language and they don't have a language. They talk to one another, communicate with one another through few sounds, but we have this uh, complex uh, language system. Like, for example, I give you this one tense that is the simple present tense and then you can make 
millions of sentences. For example, I write, I teach, I play, uh, I read, I write. You can make thousands of sentences like this. Or the continuous is very uh, simple, is that she's falling down, I was playing, she will be, okay. One more thing is that this is very simple. I know that you know it but I want you to learn it 100% and then if somebody asks you a question so you are able to explain it as well because when we will be doing complex sentences like the one I asked you that day on WhatsApp and mostly student, I mean, they, they answered incorrect was just because of these uh, sentence, these, uh, these simple sentences uh, or clauses that you were not sure. So when we are making these complex sentences, we'll be using past perfect tense or uh, uh, future continuous or future perfect. I will not explain it later on while explaining uh, complex sentences. So is it clear, the, the, you know all these uh, 12 tenses, huh? Yes, sir, it's clear. All of them? Yes, sir. So I will give you a, a, another verb and you will make all the sentences, right? So another verb is have. So can we make a simple present tense with have? Yes, sir. So make it quickly. Uh, I have money. Very good. And in simple past? I had money. Very good. And simple future? I will, um, yes, yes, simple future, I will have, I will uh, have money. Very good, excellent. And in present continuous? I will be having money. No, present continuous. Uh, sorry, sir, I'm having money. Excellent. I'm having money. Excellent. And then uh, 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 past continuous? I was having money. And future continuous tense? I will be having money. Very good. And present perfect? Um, I will have um, present perfect. I have been um, present perfect. Uh, I have had money. Very good. Excellent. See, that is the, the third form of the verb. So one have is the auxiliary verb. Like, for example, this one. This is the helping verb or the auxiliary verb. And as you said, uh, I have had money. So that had was the main verb. So here we have this. Many people are like, they, they get confused because that they use this have and had both. Both are uh, verbs, but one is a helping verb. The other one is the main verb. So you understand that. Very good. Okay. And then you understand this uh, perfect continuous tense as well. I hope you understand that, right? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, now, so these are basically what I just said is that these are action verbs, right? Action verbs, and uh, you just change the verb form and we have a, a, a different kind of a tense. So just by changing the verb form, we can have another kind of a, of a tense. So th this is verb. I mean, you will be asked such questions. So uh, the verb, uh, we have a, a first, form of, first form of the verb, second form of the verb, third form of the verb, and then progressive form of the verb, which is the ing form of the verb. And the second uh, form of the verb, where do we use it? The first form of the verb, where we use it, we'll be talking it in detail now. So what I'm just telling you that you, okay, many people say that I know my students, uh, that they have problem in tenses. Even if you are a master student, uh, you can have sometimes uh, these, uh, like you, you have problems in uh, translating these uh, tenses. So the best way is to memorize it. I know there are certain students that they may not know these uh, tenses. So the best way is to go and practice it every day or after a few hours, just uh, go through it once 
And if you do that in a week, you will learn it a hundred percent. So yes, Umar Ali, you raised your hand. Again, this is the past tense. So now when, now when you see uh, these tenses on the billboards out on the road or on the internet, you should concentrate that what type of a tense it is. If you are playing with these tenses, so whenever you read and you read a tense, you just try to understand it, the, what uh, type of sentence it is. So we have 12 action sentences and it all of these four have different meaning. Uh, action and auxiliary yes. verbs. We, so we have auxiliary verbs which was is and was and will be or have or had or have. And these are auxiliary verbs. And, and the last one is the perfect continuous tense. He has been running since morning. And you know where we use since and where you, we use for. So another thing which is important is that we do not have only 12 tenses. We have uh, uh, 18 tenses, which is uh, state sentences or state simple sentences or state clauses or state uh, tenses. Now, if you see action verbs are millions, right? Like there are so many verbs like play or eat or drink or, or, or read or write or drive thousands or millions of verbs. But if you see state sentence is just only one or few, like there are a few others, but state tense is just uh, one. And that becomes so complicated. I mean, why it is complicated is just because it has uh, uh, four first form of the verb. Like, for example, if you see go has just one form of uh, first form of the verb, go. And uh, the second form is just went. And third form is gone. This is action verb, remember. And state verb, if you see, we have four kind of first form. And then we have two uh, different forms of second form of the verb. And third is just one. So that is why uh, people get confused because that we have four. Uh, why, are, why do we have these four form of the verbs? And why do we have two forms of second form of this state verb? So state verb is just one, and that is is or be or was, and the third form is been. Now, again, the been which is used in the passive sentences, like, for example, uh, the apple has been or the apple was eaten or the apple has been eaten by them. Now, that been is a helping verb. Now, here we'll be using this bin verb, and that will be a main verb, which will have a meaning. Remember, auxiliary verbs, they do not have meaning. They just tell us which, which type of uh, tense it is, but it can also be used as a main verb, and in these tenses, it is the main verb. So here, if you see, I'm happy, and this M is a main verb. Again, I told you, that we cannot have a tense or a clause or a simple sentence without a verb. So in this sentence, if you see, I am happy. Now, I am happy. We have a verb and what? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, okay. So here we have a verb and that is a main verb. But that is a helping verb as well. So if I say, I am going, now there it is auxiliary verb, but if I say, I am happy, it is a, a main verb. And another thing which is important here is that whenever we use state verb, we will have a different formula, and that will be a subject plus verb and an adjective, remember. So if you see, in the first one, we just had a subject and a verb. Now, object was optional. If you wanted to aid it, you can aid it. Or like, if you don't want to aid it, it's okay. You can still make a, a, a tense. But state tenses will definitely uh, need this, uh, this uh, adjective. 
which we'll be doing later on. So uh, adjectives, adjective is uh, an important element of this kind of tense. So we need to have a subject, we need to have a verb, and that is a state verb. And then we have, we need to have adjectives or nouns. We don't have an object here because there is no action verbs. So if you don't have an action verb, how can you have an object? What is object which receives an action? So if the subject is not performing any action, we will not have a uh, object in these sentences. So another one, if you see this one, I is the subject and where is the main verb? Was is the main verb. And in the third one, we have this B is the main verb. And, and we don't have a continuous uh, sentence in this one. Why? Because continuous means when the, when the work is in the progress. So again, we don't have an action verb. So here we do not have 12 tenses. We have only six tenses because the continuous tense, uh, uh, we cannot make a continuous tense. Why? Because we don't have a... Uh, uh, action verb, we have a state verb. That's why we cannot have a continuous verb. So what I'm saying is that verb, when a verb changes, it gives you uh, another structure or another, uh, uh, it gives you another sense. So verb is so important. And then we have this uh, morphology. If you know morphology is the study of forming words. And yes, sir, yes. I think we cannot have a, a, a 40, I mean, more than 40 minutes class in this uh, Zoom, can I? Yes, sir. That's right. Okay. So, uh, did you understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. Let them, others. Oh, if you have any question, you can ask me, okay? Sir, so, uh, Umar have a question, I think. Yes, yes. Umar? Where Umar, is Umar? kindly ask it from, sir. What was he saying? Did he ask you? Umar, no, I think Umar is not here right now. Okay. You've uh, been no, a while. So, so, so the, these uh, uh, verbs can have can change the meaning okay we'll be quick right we have only 15 minutes i guess then you have another class right yes sir so I'll, yes sir okay wait a second i just got this message let me send them this link again i guess sir it is in the group that link I have joined okay. it from there. Okay, good. Yes, somebody is. No, I mean, we started this meeting again, I guess. So we will have another link. Or we can have, we can go with the same link. We can go with the same we, link, sir. Okay, good. So we can go with the same link because okay. I have joined it okay. from there as well. Okay, okay. Let me quickly just go uh, and explain these few other things. So we have another thing is we have uh, uh, 18 tenses, uh, 12 is uh, action tenses, and then we have uh, six state tenses. And remember, all these tenses are different because we have a different form of the verb and different uh, order of these verbs can give you a different tense. Got it? So, yes, sir. Okay. Now, now yes, sir. if you see this order, ordering of element in a complex sentence, now quickly just look at it and then I'll explain it. Let me uh, admit everybody. Okay. So, if you see this uh, this uh, tense. There are few other tenses. Okay, another most important thing is what I'm just. Why are you guys message on WhatsApp? Um, link, click. I cannot. Okay, 
So uh, if you see number first sentence like this one, okay, just. Uh, it might rain. Now this is also a clause and a simple sentence. Um, it might rain. Or for example, she has arrived. Now this is a past uh, present perfect. Or another one, the C uh, one is they were working. Or for example, the D, uh, Jamie had been uh, looking. Or E, it might have been used. This is a passive sentence. Or for example, F, we may have been being followed. Now you just tell me that this F uh, sentence, is it wrong or right? Have you ever seen such sentences? We may have been being followed. Hello? Yes, sir. I understand. Have you ever seen such a sentence that if we say we may have been being followed? Now, if you yes, remember sir. in schools, we are always told that present perfect continuous tense cannot be changed into passive. You remember that, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, there are such, so this is a rare case that sometimes we can change it, uh, but, but it is not common. We don't speak it because it, it, it sounds very awkward. Like when you say, I... Uh, have been being uh, uh, allowed. So it's a little bit uh, rare. It's because it sounds different and very awkward. That's why we don't use it. Otherwise, some people use it. And it is, uh, we can make uh, present continuous or past perfect continuous or future perfect continuous in a, in a, in a passive sentence. So this F, uh, a sentence is very rare, remember. Uh, we, some people use it, but not very often. Excuse so, me, uh, Excuse yes. me. G, 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 G. Is it grammatical, sir? Yes, it is grammatically. Grammatic. Yes, it is grammatically correct. 100% it is grammatical. So this. Sir, it has consecutively three verbs, sir, which are the main verbs and which are helping verbs. Yes, yes. So what I'm just telling you is that the prescriptive grammarian will tell you that it is not a correct. But why? Because, I mean, uh, the, the, it's like it doesn't make sense or it sounds very awkward. So we have not been using it. So it's not uh, incorrect. It is very rare. Rare means that, I mean, uh, we do not use this very often. Sometimes we use it. So grammatically, it's correct. Yes, of course, it's correct. Uh, so if you see, we have a model verb, auxiliary verb, and you can identify what is model verb, what is auxiliary verb. It's very simple. If, then if you have a question, you can ask me. And then we have passive auxiliary. If you see this been or being is... Uh, auxiliary but that is passive auxiliary and you know how to you know passive active and passive sentences right yes, so, sir. so again if you look at it so we have a different kind of verbs so one is the model verbs the perfect auxiliary have or had or then we have uh, progressive auxiliary verbs the was or the were or the been. And then we have a passive auxiliary verb, which can be is. So all these uh, is or was or been is also auxiliary verbs. And then we have a lexical verb is the main verb, right? So lexical verb, they are main verbs. Just, okay, we have 10 minutes. Do, do you understand this order? We already made sentences on this one, right? It was just to tell you that there are different other uh, tenses as well. So, okay, now these were just tenses, remember. Now we have how many tenses? 12 or uh, 18 tenses, 12 uh, action tenses. And then we have these model verbs. You already know these model verbs. I can, 
come by car. So it shows possibility, right? That it is possible. Or if I can use this in a different way, that cannot happen. It is impossible. Like for example, if you if somebody gives you a, a news which you think is impossible, you say that cannot happen. So it gives you another sense. Or for example, she can speak many languages. That shows ability. Or for example, can I ask a question? Is a permission? Or could I uh, come in? Is again the same like can, but it is a request that if you are asking somebody or you are requesting somebody, you use it in a different way. So all these model verbs, if you see, um, uh, they can they do not have first form of the verb or second form of the verb. Like we don't, some people say that can is the first form or could is the second form, but that is not right. Uh, could is also the first form. Can is also the first form, but it is used in different sentences having different uh, meaning. Uh, we have then, uh, okay. So if you just go through it, because we have five minutes, I cannot explain it. You, you just read it. I will send you this file as well. And then if you have any question, you can ask me. And then we have this uh, non-standard English, like you have seen it in uh, in songs or, or movies that they say, I gonna be late. Now this is a, a, a non-standard, it's not incorrect. Remember we talked about non-standard. Non-standard is a language. We cannot say that that is not a language, but it is non-standard. We have uh, uh, have this, uh, like uh, we, we, we know that this is non-standard, but we cannot say it is incorrect. Again, we have another tense that is, I got a go. Have you ever heard this uh, sentence? I got a go, or for example, she has yes, got to go, or I am sorta, sort of, sort of means they say I'm sorta, I'm sorta tired yes, today. Sir. I wanna dance, and th these, uh, uh, this, uh, these two lines are from a song, and the song, uh, I mean, it is I wish that I could stay, but I got to go, or I gotta go. So I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna. No, all these are, I'm gonna call you is informal. It's not even uh, non-standard. So you know the difference between, uh, we, we talked about it, formal and informal. So, uh, okay. Now this was very, very simple way of uh, using these verbs. Now we have a complex or a different kind of verbs as well. That is called non-tensed verb. For example, if you see these bold uh, words, for example, pointing or accompanied or uh, to get there, these are non-tense verb because it doesn't tell you or doesn't show what uh, tense it is. It's all, always ing form or third form of the verb, right? So, so these are called non-tense verb. Why? Because it doesn't tell you uh, which tense is it. It just gives you a different meaning or it's a phrasal uh, verbs like this is a phrase verb uh, phrase and it is a phrasal verb why pointing at uh, my forehead he asked if i had been fighting so pointing at my forehead so we can start a sentence with a verb phrase and then we will have comma definitely or accompanied by his friend he trod around the island or for example uh your connection is unstable can you hear me yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. yes sir so this is uh okay again uh, we have uh i'll just go very quickly now core model verbs like for example uh, can or could or should or all these kind of verbs uh, they cannot, we can, they cannot occur in such, in certain sentences, but uh, have to or able to can be in the beginning or can be a, a phrase, verb, phrase, sentences, we can use it. For example, being able to run fast, it means that I can run fast uh, what you um, miss as you get older. So being able to run, run fast is what you miss as you get older. 
so for example it 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 has this meaning that uh, that you cannot run fast and you will miss that when you get old so it becomes very lengthy sometimes so if you have these phrases or this verb uh, and you can use it in a different way you can have a very uh, i mean stylish kind of sentences or for example then we have this uh, non tense different form of verbs ing form or uh, or ed form or like the third form of the verb the passive so we can use it as a passive or a perfect sense uh, or infinitive the last one this is infinitive like for example to pass exam now this is a non tense verb why because to pass this exam you need to work hard or i can use it in the past to pass this exam you needed to work hard so we'll change this need we cannot change with to because we already know that after to we will have a first form of the verb um ha huh, if do you you just i'll send you this uh, the, the this uh, this file you just go through it and then if you can if you have any question you can ask me i think you have another class so we should uh, end this class here what do you think yes, yes sir let's end it today okay it's enough i'll send you the file and then if you uh, have any question you can ask me there right okay sir okay, thank sir. you so much thank you sir thank you so okay allah hafiz Thank you.